Hey there, I'm here to talk about the new VMM hypervisor that's part of OpenBSD Current. And this got enabled in snapshots a couple of weeks ago, and I've been tinkering with it for the last week or so. Uh, you may have saw where I upgraded this laptop uh, with an i5 processor just so that I could use it. Um, VMM requires a NetOM or newer microarchitecture on Intel processors only, so uh, you pretty much have to stick with i7 or i5 processors. Um, other than that, you should be all set. Um, I'll dive in and just start with uh, a couple of things. The very first thing is you need a fairly recent snapshot. Here I'm running one from October 22nd, as you can see. I've got uh, VMD started in my rc.coms.local. And you can see I've got a couple of other things going on here, like um, my login manager, which is slim. Um, I've got APM enabled with um, automatic performance scaling and a couple other things. But the real important thing here is VMD. Um, you can specify some other flags here. You can see the flags available for it in the man page for VMD. But uh, really all you have to do is put this line in your rcconf local file, and it'll start. By default, uh, it will just start and run, and you can manually start VMs uh, with VMCTL. And VMCTL has a couple of quick arguments to it, um, including console, create, load, reload, reset, and a few other things. Um, but the thing that I'm doing is I'm starting VMD with uh, VM.com. you here. Now, um, the developers have actually given us uh, virtual switches and some network architecture that makes setting up networking uh, a little easier, especially when you start talking about setting up a routing environment, running these VMs behind a NAT on um, you know, a personal workstation, or in my case, a laptop. And so here I've created a virtual switch with a virtual Ethernet port and three tap interfaces. Each of the tap interfaces gets mapped to one of these three VMs that I've got specified in my config file. Uh, the virtual Ethernet is good because I'm going to run my uh, DHCP server and if you looked at my RC Conf local you'll see I had my DHCP server uh, listening on the Ether Zero. Um, and so I've got three VMs to find here. Uh, one is the uh, snapshots that I was using on my host OS. Uh, so this is also running the October 22nd snapshot. Uh, I'm also running a uh, OpenBSD 6 release uh, AMD64 virtual machine and a i386 virtual machine as well. Uh, so those are the three VMs. Uh, we can look at those with VMCTL status. You can see I've assigned a maximum of 512 megs of RAM to each of those. Uh, they're all hovering around 150 megs used. You can also see which virtual serial console it's assigned to each of these VMs. So, for instance, if I want to connect to the console of the first VM, I use uh, VMCTL console 1, and I can do it this way and get my virtual machine, or uh, I could just connect to this serial console with something like Minicom or CU, which is in base. Uh, and you've got to use Duas since these are all owned by root. And you'll see I've also got the same console here. Um, now, you can log into these. And, and again, these are ones that I've already installed uh, that you can see running. Um, so you can log into these on the console, or you can see that I've got the virtual I.O. Um, Ethernet interface up, and you can see that I've got a usable IP address here, so you know, I might as well just log out and get off the console. Uh, see you, you escape it with tilde dot. Um, I could easily just SSH into this as well. And I have not logged into this one before via SSH. And here I am as well. So same thing. 
know, these can all get on the network. You can do package ads, package, uh, you know, uh, download whatever you want to get your, uh, to get your environment set up the way you want. Um, I don't think I've actually installed much of anything in this one. Uh, so I've installed Nmap, which included Lua, PCRE, and then Quirks is just the base uh, exception package add rules that comes down with package add every time. Um, and that's pretty much how these run. Now you can go and create a new one if you want uh, with VMCTL create. And it'll tell you uh, the file name. You need to specify the file name. Uh, you can put it in close if you want. And you have to specify the size, and you can of course use um, M for megabytes, G for gigabytes, etc. I'll give this thing 500 megabytes, and it'll make an image file for me. If I wanted to, say, boot this with the bsd.rd image so that I could use the initrd to install, uh, you can do vm, of course, do as ctl. And you start dash c to spawn a console dash k slash bsd.rd. That's going to use the bsd.rd file that's on my hard drive of the host OS. Um, give it some memory, and I've had good luck doing 512 megs of memory here. Um, and give it one interface with i, um, and then use your uh, your disk image. And this should be enough to get things started. Uh, so I should be able to go do as vmctl console and uh, connect to console 4. And here I've got my installer already up. Uh, so we missed all the boot kernel, or kernel messages, which is fine. Um, it boots very fast. Um, but you just walk through the install like normal. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, since I've already got the virtual switch up and running, um, DHCP should be able to give me, actually it's probably not because I didn't specify tap for, let me just go add that real quick. Um, so you can see it, the uh, virtual switch is bridge zero, um, and I've got a tap three that's not part of the bridge yet. I'm going to go ahead and add that. So I've added tab 3 to the bridge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and configure BIO 0 one more time with DHCP. And there we go, we've got an address now. So that's something that I would have to, if I wanted to keep this one up and running, go ahead and add that to that virtual switch in VM.com. No big deal there. Um, throw in a silly password for root. Um, here it's asking if we want to change the console to COM0. Again, COM0 is this virtualized serial port that shows up as a TTYP. Um, you kind of have to do that if you want a console. I'm not going to bother adding a username to this one. Um, it knows I'm in US Central. This is all rudimentary stuff. OpenBSD for the most part. Uh, you can just follow the prompts and accept most of the defaults. Um, I'll go ahead and install from HTTP. Uh, this time, and here's one of my mirrors that I've actually already got set up, um, just so you can see how the networking works here. A little slow perhaps on the network stuff, but let's just watch and see what happens. Uh, so that's it, it's, uh, it's connected to the mirror, it found the packages, um, it's just going to go ahead and install everything. And I can actually go and disconnect from this while it's installing, and go off and do other things. Uh, VMCTL status, and you can actually see I've got four VMs now. This one didn't get a name because I didn't name it. Um, it's just showing dash C. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, when that VM uh, finishes installing, you'll have to boot it from a kernel outside the virtual machine environment, um, in which case I would just boot it with the slash BSD. Uh, so when I, when I do the start, um, I would literally just say, uh, you know, boot this thing manually with slash BSD. Uh, if you wanted this thing to run by default or you wanted it in the config file, uh, you could just add this one into the config file very much like I did the other one. 
Uh, and to get the networking up, uh, that was pretty simple. Uh, I just used PF. This config file was mostly made from the OpenBSD FAC on building a router. Um, and you can see a whole bunch of this is uh, very similar in the my PF config and this PF config. Uh, look an awful lot alike, and that's because I pretty much just did a uh, stack overflow copy and paste job on it. Um, made a few tweaks to the interface list. Uh, also has some additional tips like you'll need to enable um, IP forwarding and some other stuff. Um, as always, OpenBSD has great documentation on everything and uh, if you can't find it in the man page, you can probably find it in the, uh, in the FAQ or um, on the mailing list. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to VMM right now. It's a great system and looking forward to OpenBSD 6.1 release. Uh, because uh, this is all going to be there by default. I went ahead and reconnected just to watch this thing finish installing and I'll finish the install. Uh, that's it. I'll see you guys later.